Today, we're going to create this horizontal image gallery with smooth scrolling, and we'll be using Lenis and Framer Motion to bring this to life. You can grab the starter code in the description to follow along. To start, I have a new Next.js project with Lenis and Framer Motion installed. Let's start by laying out the basic content of the image gallery. So here on the home screen, I'm going to replace the starter code text. First, I'm going to add a div, and this will have class of width full. Inside this div, I'll add a h1 tag with text of images and then apply some styles so font bold tracking normal text i'm gonna make it pretty big 22 view width make it all uppercase text neutral 200 and leading of none to reduce the line height so you can see it's nice big header then below this text i'm going to add another div which will be the container for our gallery i'm going to give this div a display flex and inside here, we're going to map over the image data, which is available in this data.ts file already. So we get the images from there. And we'll map over. And then for each image object, I want to create images of a specific size. So I'm going to use a surrounding div for this. And inside this div, I'll add the image tag. So on this surrounding div for each image, I'm going to add a width of three fourths, a max height of 50 view height, an aspect of landscape. So this is what defines the size of the image. And on the image tag, I'm going to give it class names of width full, height full, object cover. And just so we can see this, I'm going to add a BG neutral of 300. Now just to optimize this, I'm also going to add a key onto each of these divs. And I'll set it to be, let's say, image.id. And let me replace the spelling. Now we don't see anything and that's because this surrounding div doesn't have any size. So I'm just going to add here width of full and this is aspect video, not landscape. So now we see these image placeholders. Now you'll notice these images are all pretty small. That's because we're restricting this div to be just the size of the screen and flex forces all the content to fit inside of that. There's a simple fix on each of these image divs. I'm just going to add flex shrink zero. So this will say each of these elements should not shrink at all. So now we have these full side images with scroll. Now to only have the gallery scroll and not the whole page, I'm going to go to the surrounding div and add a overflow X auto. So you'll notice there's a cutoff now, but now I can scroll just this gallery. Okay, now let's add some images here because it's not very fun to look at gray boxes. So I'm going to add a source tag on the image and I'll pass in the image image URL. Now I'll just give it an alt of image.title. So now we get some images flowing in. Ideally, what I'd like is these images to actually extend all the way off screen and not just get cut off by, in this case, the padding on the screen. So let's fix this. The way we're going to do that is I'm going to create a wrapper around this container. And this wrapper, I'm going to give it position relative left zero, right zero. So that means it takes up the full width of the screen. And I'm going to have this apply the overflow X auto instead. So let me remove it from down here. And we don't need this width full anymore. And let's just move this div to the bottom. And let me also add a width of screen. And we actually don't need the left and right anymore. So now we can see these images go all the way to the edge. So if I scroll, it's all the way to the edge. Now let's get back to padding. So I'm going to go on to this scrolling div and add a horizontal padding of 20 to restore the padding we had before. So now when we scroll, we can still scroll all the way to the edge because the scrolling is happening on this div, which is the full width of the screen. So I can do that. But now you'll notice at the end, we don't have the padding all the way on the right. Now the hack around this is to add an empty div at the end exactly with the width of the padding we want. So after just mapping over the images, I'm just going to create a div and make this self-closing. And all we'll do here is add first flex shrink zero to make sure it doesn't get changed in size, width of 24. And I'll just apply a pointer events none so that nothing will happen here. So now we get back this padding. And let's make it 20 to match the padding of 20 on each side. One other thing here I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this default scroll bar that we're seeing. So I'm just going to go into the global.css file. 
And you'll notice there's a couple of classes here for hide scroll bar and then also for applying some styling to the WebKit scroll bar on top of that. So this is a hack to hide the scroll bar. And so all we need to do is go back here and add next to this overflow X auto hide scroll bar. So now when we scroll, we've hidden it away. So we got this gallery. Now let's add smooth scroll using Linus. So first we're going to go up here at the top of the component and we're going to create a new Linus object. So I'm going to do this in a use effect. And this use effect will launch on component mount. And I'm going to create an object here, Linus, new Linus object. And then standard setup would be creating a request animation frame function. So I'm going to make a function here locally scoped. It takes time as an input. I'll simply say Linus.raf time and call request animation frame recursively. And I'll finally kick off the initial call of this function. And then finally, for good memory management, I'm going to call lenis.destroy when the component unmounts. Now, if you've seen my previous video on implementing Lenis Smooth Scroll, you'll know that this default configuration for the Lenis object is good enough if you want to just add Smooth Scroll to the whole page. But if you want to add to a specific part of the page and a specific scroll component, then we need to do some more configuration on this object. So specifically, if I open up the options, we need a wrapper. We need a content. We need an orientation and we need gesture orientation. So orientation and gesture orientation, as you can imagine, these will be horizontal in this case because we're horizontally scrolling this. Add it down here as well. But we need wrapper and content. So we need to tell Lenis what is a wrapper component and a content that's actually scrolling. So for this, I need to set up a couple of refs. So create scroll wrapper, which is use ref. Initially will be none. And then scroll content as well, another null ref. And then we'll pass this in scroll wrapper dot current, or if it's not defined, we'll just pass in undefined. And down here, scroll content dot current or undefined. Now, because we're using use ref and we're using use effect, this needs to be a client component. So add the use client at the top. But now we need to attach these refs to the objects. Well, lucky for us, we kind of set up our content already in the right way. So here we have this wrapper div, which is the one where the scroll is actually being applied. So we'll add a ref scroll wrapper, and then the div underneath that, which is the one that actually has the content it needs to scroll, will attach the scroll content ref. Okay, let's try it. So refresh, I'm gonna scroll, and look at that. We've now got smooth scroll applied to this image gallery. Now, as a final touch, I'm just going to add a really simple progress bar at the bottom for the gallery. So here below this use effect, I'm going to pull in use scroll from frame or motion and extract out the scroll X progress property, use scroll. And here we need to pass in the container we want to track it. In this case, we can just pass the scroll wrapper that we already have set up. I'm then going to take this scroll X progress value, which is a value from zero to one and convert it to a percent. So I'm going to use a use transform for this. Take scroll x progress value from zero to one and map it to a string of zero percent to 100 percent which we'll pass for styling now i'm going to go down here and just add some very simple ui so underneath this div i'll make a div to surround the scroll progress give it a class name of margin top six so it's a little bit below the image gallery i'll make a div this will be the div for the empty progress so here I'll give it a, let's say, width 40, height 1, rounded full, BG neutral 200, and overflow of hidden. So if I save, we can see that down here. And let me make this spell correctly so we get the rounded corners. Then inside this div will be the div that fills up the progress as we scroll. So we'll do a div, a self-closing div, and all we need to do is give it class names of height full a BG neutral of 500, so a little bit darker, and we give it a dynamic width based on the progress. So I'm just gonna pass a style tag, and the width will simply be the progress motion value that we have set up up here. Now this is giving an error because it's saying progress is a motion value, we can't just pass that in, so we need to make this div a motion div. And import motion. So now let's hit save, and now let's start scrolling. 
And there we go. The progress bar is filling up. Also following that smooth scroll and then empties back down. That's it for this video. Drop any questions you have in the comments. If you found this video helpful, you should also check out this video on screen and I'll see you in the next one.